West Ham scouts were present to watch Denmark's clash against Austria on Monday evening amid interest in Christian Eriksen. It's all about Christian Eriksen. Roll the title. Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Welcome back to the West Ham Network for your West Ham Daily, and it is about that man, Christian Eriksen. My name is Anton. If you are new around here, please make sure you do go and subscribe to the channel. We're on the march towards 20,000 subscribers. I want us to get there by the end of the year. We've got six months to hit that target. I'm, we're going to smash it. I know we are, so let's do it. Hit that subscribe button. There's also a bell notification as well. If you can hit that bell notification, that will notify you when our shows do go live now this is the daily it's coming out a bit early but it had to come out early because west ham have been linked with a move for the brentford playmaker he is out of contract and he did have a brilliant spell for brentford in west at west london after su suffering from the cardiac arrest during the euro 2020 summer but the club have now taken further steps to cement our interest in interest in ericsson by sending scouts to watch the game in austria um, according to an image shared by the FA intermediary Paul O'Keefe. So you can see here from the image that he tweeted last night that these are the clubs, the scouts that were watching the game last night. Now, there's no guarantee that that's the reason why we were there. However, we have got a keen interest in Christian Eriksen. So you can see West Ham, Manchester United, Borussia Dortmund um, and Tottenham Hotspur, who we do know he does have a history with. Now, other Premier League clubs like Tottenham and Manchester United as well as several other European clubs, like I've mentioned, were present with a 30-year-old to believe to be the focus of attention. And if you want things done, sometimes you do have to go and do them yourself. And that's what West Ham seem to be doing by ensuring that we're in the conversation when it comes to Ericsson's future. He has said previously that he wants to play Champions League football, and that is something that West Ham can offer to him. However, we do have the financial backing and you could also say a perfect spot for him in our starting lineup that would suit with some sort of European football to offer on top of that. But the player does have an incredible relationship with Tottenham, who seem to be potentially favourites at this moment to bring him in, as well as a great feeling of affection towards Brentford, who gave him the chance to get back into football. However, if Moyes wants the player, then the club must do all they can to get the deal done. And there are plenty of upsides to the club right now. And we would kick ourselves if we didn't at least try to get something done and try and bring Ericsson into the club. And watching him turn out for his country, where he started in his favoured number 10 role, means that he get to see exactly what he can offer up close and personal. Now, listen, Ericsson, we all know the history. He recovered from a cardiac arrest at Euro 2020 to sign for the Premier League club Brentford in January on a short term deal. And he has been extremely influential with Brentford and helping them to finish um, in their best ever finish in 13th place. But his contract has expired or set to expire at the end of this month. And several clubs are showing interest in the guy. They've, Brentford have already offered him a long-term contract for the club. So it's set to be seen what his decision is going to be made. And it's very rare that a top player like Ericsson is available on a free transfer and attainable. And supposedly after missing out on him in January, Brentford took the plunge first and West Ham will be keen not to miss out on him again. Playing his best football as a number 10, he would slot in perfectly to David Moyes' system right behind the striker and alongside Jared Bowen. And his set-piece delivery would be a absolute weapon that any manager would be keen on taking advantage of. And his form after returning to the Premier League backs that up with Brentford winning seven of their 10 games that he started. I've also brought to you some of the stats for him while he played at Brentford for the games that he did. One goal, four assists. Nearly three chances created per 90 minutes. One successful dribble per 90 minutes. 
80% passing accuracy per 90 minutes, 1.2 successful tackles per 90 minutes, and one interception per 90 minutes. You can't but deny that this guy was influential for Brentford when he came back to them, of course. And it's unconfirmed whether, like I said, the scouts were present at the game to scout Ericsson, um, but he did leave Inter Milan after suffering the cardiac arrest um, at the last year's Euros Championships. And the reason why was because they couldn't, the rule with regards to the, the device that was put inside Ericsson, the Italian Serie A would not allow, so he had to leave the club. And Brentford were hailed for giving him the chance to reignite his career and show off the faith and, you know, giving them a crucial aspect of the race for a signature. Um, and that's probably helping them for a race for a signature this summer. But Spurs and Conte are lurking and it may prove to be difficult to bring in the Danish international. Um, Ericsson took time to get to grips with Conte's style and was often left on the bench, but he gradually became an important player when he was with Conte at Inter Milan, featuring deeper in the midfield during their 2021 Serie A title win. And it's a role he since replicated at Brentford, playing in a midfield three under the Danish manager Frank, in contrast to more advanced positions he used to take up for Pochettino's Tottenham in a favoured 4-2-3-1 formation. At Inter, they played with a 3-5-2, and at the time, Christian Eriksen was used to be playing at Tottenham behind a striker in a 4-2-3-1. Conte himself told reporters back in April he needed a bit of time, Eriksen needed a bit of time to understand his idea, Conte's idea of football, but when he did this, he became a really important player for them. And he said, I see Brentford, they're playing sometimes 3-5-2, 3-4-3, and in a 3-5-2. And he's doing the same things he did with Inter by being their playmaker. But when you have a player with great availability to improve themselves and put themselves at the service of the team, it's easier for a manager. And he said, Christiansen, Christian is one of those types of players. I don't remember once that he complained when he was on the bench, a top player, a top person in every moment. But then Ericsson has always carried his brilliant as a footballer lightly on and off the field. Um, and so what I'm going to do is play a little cheeky video for you, showing you some of the history of uh, Christian Eriksen. Here's everything you need to know about Christian Eriksen. <laughs>
the age of 18, he was playing for Ajax in the Champions League against Real Madrid. At Spurs, he was known as the Galazzo. For a while, he was their maestro. In seven years at Tottenham, he became a key part in the revolution in the club's style, fortunes and expectations enacted by Mauricio Pochettino. And in his first season, he scored the winner at Old Trafford on New Year's Day and finished with 10 goals. The following season, he kicked off just behind Emmanuel Adebayor in attack. And by the turn of the year, with Harry Crane, Kane, now installed as compelling forward partner, he was one of the outstanding creative players in the league and an unusual one too. English football, by that point, had fully absorbed the idea of an inside forward who drove the game from between the lines. Ericsson is the kind of Nordic variation of that. Never a flashy player, but with but always with great movements and flourishes. He was relentlessly prod productive and was able to find tiny pockets of space. His game marked by clarity, vision and complete immersion in the team. He played more than 300 games, as you saw from that video, for Spurs, but faded as the team aged together. He was a £12.5 million pound signing, and he's got to be going down as one of the most engaging and most, you know, valuable um, assets and recruits that came in uh, to Spurs at that time. He moved in January of 2020 as his Spurs contract ran down, and he went to Inter Milan because why? He wanted to win some trophies. Um, and he went to Inter Milan, and he did struggle at the start, but he was showing signs of settling in to the Inter Milan team under Conte, and he did help in them winning a Serie A title, his first major honour since three league titles with Ajax. Um, he is described as the classic number 10. It's his favourite position, right in the centre of the pitch as an attacking midfielder. He has many skills at the back of his hand. He presents his excellent vision, passing range all over the shop, crossing accuracy, movement and the ability to read the game extremely well. His creative playing style has led many pundits comparing him to Michael and Brian Loudrup, for the, you know, the, the, the legends of the Danish game, as well as Wesley Snyder and Raphael van der Vaart, if you do remember those players. But what do you think of Christian Eriksen? Can West Ham tempt him and bring him into the club? Now, Again, I'm not saying it, but there was and has been scouts watching the game from West Ham, as you've seen from the video earlier on. I do like the sounds of him. Free transfer. Um, he was earning over 200k a week when he was at Inter Milan, and obviously the situation changed. He's now earning a lot less at Brentford, and he is out of contract. So his weekly wage, I think he'll be demanding something reasonably well, because he is a sought-after player. He can create, and I think there is a space for him in our team. It's just whether or not he would be wanting to give us a shot, or if he went back with Conti, would he fit into their style of play? Would he get game time? I think he's become, and I think he is an extremely humble footballer. However, I think he may look to see where he's going to get the most game time. And that's maybe where West Ham can step in to the plate if he buys into the vision of what Moyes is doing. It depends on who else we can bring in alongside that. I know we're linked to a million players. I get it. I know we are. I know we're linked to everybody. But I am trying to say to you, these are the sort of players. Would Moyes like them? I can see why Moyes, I can see why many teams would want to bring Ericsson in. Leave your comments in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts on bringing Ericsson to the club. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and join me at five o'clock for the Hammers headlines. Come on, you irons. It's like a family tree, part of you and